and now in English. All right. Um, so we are very uh, blessed, happy to have Coach uh, Holtz here with us. I'll give a very short introduction, and then you can do sure. you. So I met, I personally met Eric first in 2007. It was then the professional league came to Israel. There was one and only professional baseball league here called the IBL, the Israel Baseball League. Eric came as a player coach for the Beit Shemesh White Sox, they were? Blue Sox, Blue Sox. Blue Sox, Blue Sox the Beit Shemesh Blue Sox. Um, and that's where we started and met. Later, he came back with the USA Maccabi A team, uh, then came on to coach the Israeli national team in the summer of 2017, was it? Correct, right? correct. Yeah. Um, and has been with us ever since. Has been with us ever since. The coach for the national team now turned into the Olympic national team. So he is the head coach for the Olympic team. And we are happy that he's here to be with us. So Eric also has a baseball facility, an indoor baseball facility in New York. And he has a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, kids that he work with in all different levels, all different ages. So we thought it would be a great start to our conversations is to have Coach Eric here, Coach Holtz, Holtz share with us a little bit about what he does and what can we do and what can you do during this time indoors and how to stay in shape and specifically baseball shape. Uh, and then the floor will be open. You'll be able to ask as many and whatever questions that you would like. Eric, I'm sure we'll be happy to answer them. Sure. Uh, so Eric, the floor is uh, yours. Thank you, Ophir. All right, boys. Good to see everybody, first of all. Um, I truly cannot tell you how much I miss being in Israel and working with you guys and seeing you guys. And, uh, you know, Israel over the years really <clears throat> has become my home away from home. Um, obviously, I, I live in New York, but uh, Israel is, uh, is always in my heart. Um, we, as a population, are going through an unprecedented time in the history of uh, the world. Um, nobody has ever seen nor dealt with anything like this. Um, this goes back to biblical times and, and plagues and stuff like that that they talk about, you know, in Passover. Um, we've all been forced to do things differently than we're accustomed to. Um, but for me, you know, that doesn't mean that we can't still do our work and, and find ways to get our work in, um, you know, on a regular basis. And, and Ophir, I'm just trying, uh, hold on. I'm trying to go back to, can I see everybody? How come I'm only seeing myself here? Uh, maybe my fault. There That's okay. That's okay. I put them all to see you. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. I got it. Um, so, so, you know, again, I, I, at, at the beginning, I said to, you know, Ophir, and, and I'm being really serious, you know, at 54 years old, um, I don't just coach. Um, I play. I play probably three nights a week uh, or three days a week when I'm here uh, not coaching Israel. And, and coaching, uh, you know, other baseball. And for me, I've also had to find ways that I could stay sharp and stay ready. Um, and when I talk about staying sharp and staying ready, it's not just physically, guys. We have to stay sharp physically, mentally, and emotionally. And how do we do that? How do we do those things? So let's talk about some of the things that we can do in our own homes, um, in our own rooms even, um, that take nothing but your body, your body weight, your time, and some effort, okay? When thinking about what I wanted to talk to you guys about, I tried to, without Googling and without looking on the internet anywhere, I tried to come up with a bunch of different exercises that I've done in the last week or 10 days since we've been quarantined here in, in New York. And obviously, as Coach Ophir has been talking about, uh, there's been a million challenges, right? So we can do all different types of push-ups, sit-ups, crunches. Does anybody have a chin-up bar 
in their house. I don't, but if I don't, I can use uh, the, the door frame to, to, to pull myself up. I can do dips on my couch. I can do uh, squats, one leg squats on my couch, one foot at a time, okay? Everybody has walls in their homes. We can do wall sits. Any, any pitchers here that have their own bands and band work, there are a tremendous amount of band exercises that you guys can do to keep yourself uh, stretched out and, and mobile. Um, I, and, and a bunch of you guys have sent me uh, Tomer, well, both two Tomers uh, and AJ have been sending me video to kind of break down uh, some of what they've been doing outside. What I haven't seen from a lot of guys is throwing and throwing regimens, right? We need to throw as well. So if you guys have a net or a wall, when I was a kid, and I know I'm really old, guys. I, I Believe me, I know I'm old. But when I was young, we had no cable TV, and we had no YouTube, and we had none of that stuff. So what we used to do was we used to take some chalk, and we used to draw a square on a wall somewhere. And I would pitch into that square working on my command and, and, and trying to work on different grips and stuff. Uh, so I didn't need a catcher. I didn't need a hitter. All I needed was myself and a piece of chalk to be able to kind of draw uh, a strike zone on the wall. Anyway, from there, anybody know what dead bugs are? Natan definitely knows what this stuff is. My man is in great shape. And while you guys are there in Israel, um, Natan looks like he is somebody that you guys could definitely ask. He and Morty, uh, who does stuff like this on the reg for, for programs. You know, what can I do for 15, 20 minutes a day? Leg raises, um, mountain climbers. These are all things that don't take any equipment other than your own body. Has anybody ever done planks on their own? How about side planks? How about supermans and, you know, hugs and arm circles? These are things that, again, guys, I don't have to go to a gym to do this stuff. And if I dedicate 15 or 20 minutes a day to do it, all you guys are, 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 are mandated to still study from home, correct? You're doing your homework? Is that a yes? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, so so I'm assuming you guys are doing how many hours of homework a day? I'm asking you to do maybe like an hour of baseball-related stuff. If we do 20 or 25 minutes of physical workout, then I have another half hour to do some other things. What are the other things? Okay, so I talked to you guys a little bit about um, the emotional and the mental part of staying fresh and staying in shape mentally. So, and I wanna see like a show of hands here if any of you guys have ever done this. Um, today you can go on YouTube and you can, anybody ever hear Clayton Kershaw? Yeah, okay. Danny wrote them and I probably share, Danny doesn't know this even, Danny and I share one of the greatest pitchers to ever pitch in this game, a guy named Greg Maddox. One of my favorite baseball players of all time, never threw more than like 90 miles an hour. He could hit a dime off a pylon from 60 foot six inches away, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of these guys up on my computer with a bat in my hand. And I'm gonna track pitches against some of the best baseball players to ever play the game. Clayton Kershaw, Verlander, Garrett Cole. Again, for me, it was Maddox, because the, the guy would bore you into thinking you were gonna crush him and, and, and one of the greatest pitchers of all time. For me, getting to see live pitching 
is the most difficult thing to emulate when I'm not playing, right? You can do a lot of what we call dry drills. How do I stay sharp there? So for me, one of the things that I love, and again, you guys have YouTube, you can put this actually on your TV. So some of you guys have 40, 50, 60, 70 inch TVs. It's almost like you're playing the game and you can set up and get your timing against some of the best pitchers to ever play. Now, the reverse of that is I'm a pitcher. Who are some of the best baseball players in the game today? Obviously, Mike Trout and uh, Nolan Ar Arenado and Bellinger. Maybe I want to pretend that I'm on the mound, and how am I going to attack these guys? Am I going to start them with the fastball? Am I going to start them with a two seam on their thumbs? Maybe I'm going to sit there and, and, and make believe that these guys had a great at bat against me last time. So in a 2-0 count, am I going to throw this guy a fastball that he's sitting on, or am I going to throw him a curveball? I want to start thinking about the game as if I was actually playing it. Okay? Not easy to do, but it's something that you guys can all do from your phone, your laptop, an iPad, whatever, is, is get some of game footage. For, I, I mean, you guys are all young. You could go back to the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and then into the 2000s and look at different baseball players. And what did they do? And what do I do in comparison to some of these guys that played before me? I know everybody's going to tell you, or, or if I ask you, everybody's going to say, Mike Trout's my fit. Yeah, okay, Mike Trout is unbelievable. Well, what does he do? What does he do and what can I do that's similar to what Mike Trout does? How does he load? When does he load? Does he get his foot up? Does he toe tap? What's he doing? And, and how can I compare myself and get myself ready? Because, guys, we're not going to be in this forever. You guys are going to play baseball again, okay? We need to be prepared. Now, the last part of this for me is emotional. It can get pretty depressing sitting in the house. I know it is for all of us. I have a wonderful wife and some wonderful children, but nobody's used to being together for this much time. I've started doing a lot more reading than I ever did before. Has anybody ever worked on visualization drills and meditation? Can I see? Yes. Some people shaking there. Yes. Great. Great. Meditation and visualization are ways to help me refocus my energy. Okay. For me, I failed a bunch of times on a baseball field. I have, but I've also succeeded a bunch of times on a baseball field. Learning about myself, learning how to breathe, learning how to visualize. If, if I'm pitching and one of my teammates makes an error, it's very easy for me to be upset, but I've got to learn how to take a deep breath control my emotion and get ready for the next hitter. He didn't make that error on purpose. Those are things that we can work on every day. Okay, how do we do that? Again, everybody have a smartphone? Everybody has a phone? Okay, so, so there's a great app called Calm, C-A-L-M. Every morning I turn it on um, and it just gets my head in a really, really positive place, okay? It may be, uh, I take two or three minutes to listen to rain falling, rain dropping. And then I just close my eyes and I focus on what my goals are for today. What do I wanna get done today? And then I'm gonna either make mental notes or literal physical notes on what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna start my day with a plan. 
a plan of action. And it's going to start as soon as my eyes open and I'm able to kind of just breathe myself into a really, really good place and then attack the day. We're living in a time right now where if you don't put a plan in place, it's just whatever. What are you doing today? I don't know. What do you want to do today, boys? What do you want to get done today? What do you want to accomplish in getting better? One of the things that I challenge myself and my family to do is get 1% better every day. As baseball players, if I can get 1% better every day in every aspect of my life, not only am I getting better for me, I'm getting better for my team. Okay? But if I do nothing, I guarantee you, you're not going to get better at anything. And you're going to be that guy that was unprepared in a time where we have plenty of time to be prepared. Nobody can tell you today that we're going to be playing baseball April 15th, April 30th, May 15th. We don't know. What we do know is we're going to be playing baseball again. What you do now and how you prepare now, physically, mentally, and emotionally, is going to be one of the deciding factors as to, well, you know what? I, I'm just going to run, run out on the field and expect to be you know, in tip-top shape, and, and, and I'm going to hit 500, and I'm going to throw nothing but stress. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. For me, a lot of the work that I do is mental. It's emotional. I want to feel good. I want to feel good about the people around me. What can I do to help my brother, sister, mother, father, aunt, uncle? Everybody is in a time right now where somebody needs a hug. Now, it may be a virtual hug. Reach out. Let somebody know that you're thinking about them. Coaches, this is the time where your kids need this more than ever before. Just check in to say hello. Check in to say, hey, what's going on? Is there anything I can help you with? As I said when we started, this is unprecedented times. Unprecedented boys means that this has never happened in the history of man. What I will tell you, the positive side of this, has anybody seen that South Korea is starting to play baseball already? Yeah, pretty exciting, right, Ruben? I see you shaking your head. Now, it's kind of weird they're playing with masks on. They're playing with masks on. Okay, they're playing with N95 masks on. Would you guys play with N95 masks on if I could play baseball right now? No, Itai? Who's shaking their head? No, man, I, if, if, I could, if I could wear a mask and, 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 and get out there right now, I'll tell you what, boys. If somebody told me I could play baseball right this second, I'd be on the mound like this. I would look like Bane from, from Batman if I could get out there and play baseball. It's going to happen. We're going to be there. But what you do today and every day to prepare yourself is going to factor into how ready are you. These guys, uh, the professional baseball players, professional athletes, these guys need spring training. We need spring training too. But we don't, we're not lucky enough to have the facilities and stuff that they have and the trainers that they have. So we have to find other things that are going to help us. And for me, like I said, I'm going to go back to it. Physical, what can I do to get my blood pumping every day? Mental, what can I do to feel good about myself and get my head in the right place? Emotional, okay? Whether it's meditation or visualization drills. What can I do to get better? Does everybody have a tennis ball? Yeah, everybody has a tennis ball. Everybody have a lacrosse ball? Go to a wall somewhere. Throw the ball at the wall and, and, and picture yourself making plays and turning double plays. And 
it's part of getting my head in the right place. Again, I know this sounds crazy. I know I'm an old man, guys. But at 54, these are some of the things I'm doing, okay? Because I want to play as well this year. I can't wait to play this year. But like you, I don't know when that's going to happen. So in the meantime, I have to do everything that I can do to keep myself and my players ready for when that day comes. So for me, those are the three things, like I said, physical, mental, emotional, that I can do every day. And, and Calm is a great app. I think it's a free app also. Um, you should definitely check that out and see if it's something that you guys find helpful to you. Um, there are books that we can read, um, again, about all different parts of the game. I know uh, Coach Ophir uh, sent me, you know, a couple of, of questions that, that guys uh, asked um, about me and, and, and about, you know, certain teams and who, who I'm a fan of and stuff like that. So before we open this up to any questions from anybody, for me, I'm going to answer uh, a few of those that were pre-written to, to, to Coach Ophir. Um, for the guys that don't know it, I was born and raised in the Bronx. Um, my father actually got to see Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig play baseball. Um, so I really had no choice, um, but to be a, a, a Yankee fan, um, a, a born, uh, born and raised Yankee fan. Um, um, I've never strayed from that. And, uh, I've been a, a, a fan of the pinstripes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Itai. I've been a, a fan of the pinstripes, uh, you know, my whole life. I might not always agree with what they do and how they, uh, run baseball, uh, but the history and the legacy of the Yankees has always been, uh, you know, awesome for me. Um, somebody else asked, who um, is my favorite baseball player today? Um, my favorite uh, baseball player uh, today is probably going to be Mike Trout, um, like everybody else. Um, and it's not only for what he does uh, on the field. Um, he's a selfless person. Um, very involved in the community. He's a hardworking guy, um, very um, community oriented and looking to help everybody, um, you know, uh, around him. His uh, work ethic and his preparation are, are just off the charts. And uh, so in today's day, I would say Mike Trout was, is my guy. Before Trout, it was Derek Jeter. Okay. I'm sure you guys heard of a guy named Derek Jeter. Um, the last question that, that somebody had um, uh, written to, uh, to Coach Ophir. Here, one was, second, Eric, before you go, I'll just say yeah. this. If, if you have any questions that you want to ask, um, there's a way you can just raise your hand in Zoom. That's the easiest one. And then I can see you and I'll open the mic and I'll, I'll call you out to ask. So if you have questions, guys, any questions, whatever you want, just raise your hand. I guess you can either try and raise it like this or try and raise it in Zoom. It's easier. Uh, Ruben, I see you, so I'll get you, but uh, here, Nevo raised it, so try and raise your hand through the Zoom, and then I can, uh, not physically, a virtual raise hand. Thanks. So the last uh, question I had was, what position do I play? Um, and um, one of the things about me, um, and I try to talk to all of the athletes that play for me, whether it's baseball or girls softball, is... I have always prided myself on playing every position on the field. Now, my knees are no good anymore, so I'd rather not catch. Um, but I grew up as a left side infielder, shortstop third baseman. As I've gotten older, um, I'm more of a third baseman, and I am a pitcher as well. Um, I've pitched my whole life. Um, but depending on the age of the baseball that I play, uh, really kind of uh, decides, you know, what position I'm going to play. If I'm playing against 18 year olds, I'm probably going to be playing first base at this point. If I'm playing age appropriate, 35, 45 or, or an older, I can still play short or third and, uh, and pitch no problem. So those are the three questions that, uh, that coach Ophir, uh, was, was, uh, was emailed and I will answer anything that you guys have for me. All right, uh, let me open up the floor. So, Nevo, you'll be the first one. 
Why doesn't it load? Um, um, uh, who is your best, uh, who is your favorite baseball player to ever live? This is My favorite show. baseball player to ever live. Um, I don't know, you know, right now he may be on this call with us. Um, there was a, a tremendous baseball player uh, born and raised in Israel uh, named uh, Ophir Katz. Do you ever hear of him? Mm -hmm. You heard of him. Okay, so ask me why I liked him so much. Why? Ophir Katz was one of the guys that I just talked about. Ophir would play outfield, infield, pitch, catch, whatever the team needed. That's what Ophir would do for this team. So having people around the team that are like that only makes the team better. Okay. Thanks, Cole. Uh, yeah, here, Ruben. Wait, I'll unmute you. There you go, Ruben. Yeah, thank you. I got two questions for you. So question one, so with the Olympics being delayed, how are you and how is the team, you know, being mentally prepared, physically, physically prepared, emotionally prepared for a longer delay? Um, that's a great question, Rube. Um, you know, <laughs> like everyone else, man, you know, this hit us like a ton of bricks. Um, last week. Obviously, I think it's the right decision for sure. Um, one of the things, um, as I became a little bit older, maybe a little bit smarter, um, is to learn how to control the things that I control and don't, and let go of the things that I don't control. Um, as far as preparation, it's going to be a little weird, Ruben. We, we you know, we were the first team, other than Japan, obviously, we were the first team to qualify. So if you think about when we qualified in September, by the time the Olympics come again in 2021, it will have been almost a year and 10 months since the team has played together. I mean, you know, and because everybody's kind of playing in their own leagues and, and indie ball and professionally, um, we're going to need, you know, a good two to three weeks spring training together, um, you know, to, to, to get us prepared. Emotionally, I, we'll be fine. You know, we're, we're, this isn't, we're not the only team that this happened to. And, and, and uh, I think my job as a coach and, and um, if you ask, you know, the guys that have been around me in a dugout, um, probably one of the things that I do best is I don't get too crazy when things are good and I don't yell too much when things are bad. I kind of just try and stay calm because everybody works off of the coach. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be, we'll be ready. And my last question is, I know you're close with Mo Rivera. What do you think you can get him to play for Israel? You know, get him to get an LEA so, for Israel. So, so I'm going to get, I'll tell you, I don't coach with Mo. Um, we did a, a, a pitching clinic here at my facility with, uh, with Mariano, who was a nicer human being than even as a pitcher. Um, he was going to come to Israel uh, before a lot of this stuff uh, happened, and, and I think he'll, he'll, um, he, he has plans on going back there, um, but uh, he's done. He's, the, he's done with baseball. You know, his... Um, his, uh, his son, who was playing at the uh, AA level for the Washington Nationals, uh, uh, retired. So I think for now, Mo is really just uh, spending time raising f money for his church and, and doing things along those lines. But, but, you know, he's a great guy, and hopefully you guys will get to meet him in Israel. Uh, thanks for answering my question. I really sure, appreciate it. Sure, sure. Cool. Anyone else who's raising their hand? You know you can raise a blue hand. It's easier to see. Here you go, Ken. Uh, let me get you, Aaron. Here you go, Aaron. Uh, I want to ask if you have any third base drills and first base. Do I have any third and first base drills specifically? I mean, yeah. when I'm when I'm working on, you know, third and first. Obviously, I'm always. First base, I'm doing a lot of pick drills, footwork and pick drills, um, first base. 
uh, third base. I do a lot of reactionary. Um, guys, hold on one second. If you can see my dog, my dog needs is asking for a treat. So give me one second because he is bothering me here. Hold on one second. All right, I'm back. I'm back. There you go. So for third base, I like doing a lot of lateral movement stuff where uh, I'm going side to side. Um, I, I love um, having people crush tennis balls as hard as they can at athletes. It starts with tennis balls to work on, um, you know, reaction and, and, uh, and reading the ball off the bat. Um, and like I said, you know, for first base, um, just a lot of uh, um, work and uh, a lot of pick drills. Yeah, I see. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, Alon, you're up. Hi. Hi. Um, when you heard that uh, Ian Kinzer was going to play for you guys in well, what is now the 2021 Tokyo Olympics, like, what was your initial reaction? Um, I mean, I had spoken to Ian about, uh, maybe a month ago, five weeks ago. Um, you know, what could my reaction be? I mean, he's one of the best Jewish baseball players to ever play the game. Um, but again, like Mariano, he's even a better person. So when you get to know, um, Ian a little bit, um, just having him around in the dugout, um, around the guys, and, and bringing uh, the experience that he has, um, it's pretty exciting. It, it's exciting for everyone, but it's, um, you know, I, I was obviously very happy. I, like I said, for me, um, I like to watch. Um, I'm a big chemistry guy. So, you know, who we add to the roster is just as important as how good that person is. I want high character people around me uh, and around the team to make us better. And uh, Ian is, uh, is top notch. Anybody else? Anybody else here is raising their hand? Uh, I see Israel Baseball is raising their hands, but it's on you to see who's talking. Thank you. Um, what age did you start playing baseball? Oh, uh, that's a great question. I started playing baseball at five years old. My, uh, my <laughs> back then, um, believe it or not, even at five and six years old, the pitch, um, pitchers pitch. There wasn't coach pitch. But because the pitchers couldn't throw strikes, it was eight balls and three strikes. And um, it was really, um, you know, just teaching like fundamental baseball, kind of like what we call T-ball now. But I started playing it uh, at about five years old. Okay. All right. Thanks. I mean, I don't have your name. Um, who have? Zev Moore, you're up. Let's go, Moore. Wait, don't press anything. There you go. It's like opening a car door. Um, hey, coach, I wanted to know what you think are some of the key constraints for a player, for us players here in Israel to make it to the next level and how, what, what's your advice to kind of break through that, uh, those, that adversity that we have over here? Wow. Wow, now, now you're going to get me into politics. Um, That's okay. Feel free. We're good. No worries. Okay. Um, for me, you know, the toughest thing for Israel baseball players in general is, um, you know, the fact that you have to give three years of your um, life to, to the Army. Now, I, I think that's wonderful. On, on the one hand, I think it's, it's wonderful that everybody uh, has to serve in the army and, 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 but at the same time, it's very difficult 
when kids are being recruited to play college baseball at 15, 16, and 17 years old um, here, knowing that most likely um, the kid, you know, is going to be 21 years old, is going to be a 21-year-old freshman um, somewhere at a college in the United States. So I, I think that's like, you know, one of the toughest things um, you know, dealing with you guys, you know, that, that, that you guys are dealing with on a day to day. It's very difficult um, because, you know, there's really, um, you know, no way around that. I mean, you guys have sport high, which, you know, is, is, is for, I guess, Ophir, is it one player every two years? Uh, it depends. It's not, there's no. Okay. And about um, two players a year. Oh, but it's not like, you know, 20 guys can just say, okay, I want to go play college baseball, and then I'll, I'll put my Army time in when, when I'm done. It doesn't work that way. <clears throat> the other thing is, for me, you know, the toughest part of being in, in Israel and, and playing uh, and trying to get better is <clears throat> we need to play better to get better. I need to play against better competition to push myself to continue to play better. And, you know, as much as, again, I'm in New York, we can go from New York to New Jersey and play other teams in Connecticut and Rhode Island and whatever. Um, you guys got to literally get on an airplane to go play in some of these tournaments, um, you know, which is not the most, you know, easy thing to do, uh, both financially and, and logistically as well. Thanks. All right. Um, Jordy Alter or AKA the IAB president, you're up. Hey, you know, Hey, Coach Eric, thanks so much for this great program. Uh, fantastic interaction, we really appreciate it. Ophir, thanks for setting up this whole system for us. This is an amazing way for us to be able to communicate with our, with our members. And uh, everybody on the call, please look for the other programs that are gonna follow this week and next week. We'll have a lot more of this. Um, I just want to tell everybody that uh, we're obviously we're very sad that we're not playing baseball at this point, and we will resume as, as soon as we're able to. Um, Ophir, Yaniv, and I had a discussion earlier today about uh, baseball camp this summer, and God willing, if everything is able to, you know, once we were able to return, we plan on having baseball camp this summer for a couple of weeks in August, so something to look forward to, as well as hopefully resuming the season as early as possible. I hope everybody's well out there. And Eric, I just want to say thank you so much again. Jordy, you know, with the Olympics being canceled, um, if things work out logistically, I would offer to come and help work the camp for a week this summer. That's an amazing offer. Thank you. We will uh, definitely, uh, definitely uh, take you up on that. You got it, my friend. Send my love. The same here. Thank you. Uh, Ruben right. got his hand up again. Yeah, who? I don't know. But Jonathan Schechter here. Well, let's get Jonathan Schechter going. Schechter. Schechter? Okay, can you hear? Good. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Um, Eric, in terms of, we've had a long off season, and then finally we got to spring training. Um, and as baseball fans, we all like to follow sports. What's going on in terms of off? Off season, we have signings and free agents and whatnot, and during the season, we have the season. And now there's no sports to follow and nothing to do. How do you do? You have a way that you suggest to keep into baseball, to keep interested, to follow, to learn, to get better, to keep. Yeah, I mean, I, Jonathan, I don't know if you were here at the beginning. One of the things that I talked no. about was so you know the 2020 season obviously is delayed what about uh 20 uh 2005 how about 2006 how about taking your favorite team and just going back into some of the things that happen over the last 20 years um how about looking at some of your favorite pitchers catchers hitters and kind of break down um you know what they're doing you know i i, I now i'm not interested but I saw today ESPN is showing like an NCAA basketball game from 1995, right? Is it, wow. okay. is it, is it what we want to do? It's not what we want to do. 
But today, having YouTube and a lot of other things involved, like Yonatan, who's your favorite team to follow? The Yankees. All right, great. Me too. So, you know, again, why don't you try to break down the team every few years, every five years, and, you know, just see, I mean, from the coaches down, and what were they doing? You know, how were they attacking hitters? How were the pitchers attacking hitters? Was the, the, the hitting coach different? Again, you know, Kevin Long may be different than, you know, some of the new coaches they have. See if you could pick things like that up um, and just, you know, try and make it fun, make it a game. Got it. Thanks, Shechter. All right, uh, AJ, you are up. Hey, Coach. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Um, what's more important to you? AJ, you got to speak up. Speak up. Building your body physically or uh, taking more reps? Which one to you is more important now that we have a lot of time to work on our game? You know, AJ, when you're as good looking as you are, I would uh, probably <laughs> – for me, I would work on every day the three things I, I talked about, the physical, the, the mental, and the emotional. Um, one of the things, and AJ is a kid um, that has gotten my um, contact information and starts to send me some videos and stuff. Guys, it's not just about doing reps. It's about doing reps right, right? Quality, not quantity. Making sure that I'm doing everything correctly. Um, I give these kids credit. I don't know how they found my phone number. I love that they found my phone number. Um, and, and I regularly get videos sent to me, uh, AJ, Tomer, and a couple other kids that ask me what they're doing and is it correct. Um, you guys are welcome to do that, especially now. Um, I may not answer you within five minutes, but I promise you I'm going to answer you um, to go back to AJ. What are my choices right now? I don't have many. I'm going to do as many reps as I can correctly. And at the same time, I can't take that many days off from getting my physical work in either. If that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. All right. Uh, we got – let's get – Two more questions going. So I got Liam. Liam, you're on. Um, uh, I have a question. I have a question and a follow-up question. Uh, like, um, according to the answer, like, did you coach uh, in college? Were you coaching college? I did. Okay. So, what? Like, is is it different to coach like already de de developed players than like college players? Do you coach different uh, styles? That's different? a that's a that's a great question, and I'm glad to see you trimmed your hair, Liam. Um, for me, and Liam, please understand this. I'm not just saying this to say it. I don't talk just to talk. At 54 years old, I want to learn every day of my life. I'm not satisfied with who I am or where I am in, in any aspect of my life. So that means I want to get better every day. College kids that come to you are 17 and 18 years old. Do they know everything? No, not even close. So they may be pretty good baseball players, but there's so much more that we have to continue to teach as coaches, to learn as players and coaches. I try to keep myself around really positive people that I can learn from as well. I, I don't profess to know everything. I try to lead by example, but I want to learn every day. And, and just because they're a college baseball player, um, you know, doesn't mean that they're these tremendous, you know, athletes at 17 and 18 years old yet, Liam. The difference. Okay. Um, so is there is there another question? If there's one more question, I'll take it if I can see it. Otherwise, uh, Ruben, let's go. Ruben, you're the last one. Unless I see one second. Ruben, I want to see if I see anyone else that hasn't talked yet. Oriya, do you want to 
אתה מצביע או לא? נו? אורי, נו. אוקיי. רובן, you're up. There you go, Ruben. Uh, yeah, thanks again. Uh, my question is, so I got a six-month-old cousin who I want to get into baseball once he's a bit older. What kind of stuff can I do to get him into baseball? Six-month-old. Get him walking a first. Six-month-old cousin. So what I would do is uh, I would just leave baseballs in his crib, and I would probably tie his right hand around his back so that he can only use his left. I'm kidding, Ruben. Um, <laughs> I want you to just uh, instill the love and passion that you have for the greatest game ever played. And if you're spending time um, with your cousin, um, your cousin is going to just pick that up from you. You know, passion is something that cannot be fate. Yeah. Um, all right, Eric, let me just wrap this up. I mean um, – sure. First of all, thanks again from everyone here and, and, and from what we have. Um, there's always something to give. I will ask one question to kind of wrap this up around. And sure. That's my question towards the kids, you know, and you can disregard the fact that I'm coaching or that you're coaching, and we all know that it's true. How, how do you work with a coach that you feel doesn't necessarily uh, – has your best interest. Or let's say he's not, you know, he doesn't see you, right? I mean, you think you're better than what he's giving you credit or you're struggling with him, but, but you're on his team. I mean, you don't have much choice. How would you go by with him? Especially if you're a younger player. Let's say, you know, you're 11. Oh, fear. That's, that's such an incredible question. For me. And I want everybody to really pay attention to this. For me, there is nothing that replaces communication. Communication, being respectful of each other, calmly asking a coach, hey, coach, where do you see me? Hey, coach, where do I fit in? Hey, coach, I thought I should be batting second or third. Why am I batting ninth? But at the same time, If I'm going to be prepared to ask that question, I've got to be prepared for the answer I may not want to hear. Every parent's job is to think that their kid is the next Mike Trout. Every coach's job is to do what's best for the team, for the team to be successful. But nothing in life replaces communication and communication on any level in life, whether it is me with my parents, me with my wife, my wife and I, in baseball, with an employer, with a school teacher, not whining, not complaining, not bitching and moaning. Coach, I put all, my, all the work in that everybody else has. Coach, I've taken my 100 ground balls. How come I'm not, you know, playing here or playing there? Or, or I, want, I, I thought I was going to be a left side infielder and you got me in the outfield. There's a right way to do that. And Ophir, I am all about communication in anything in life. But like I said, if it's done respectful on both ways, one of the things that I did when I coached in college, Liam asked about coaching in college, After the fall was over, we had fall baseball. After the fall was over, and we had 35 guys on the roster. We sat down one-on-one -on -one with each of the 35 guys to let them know where they stood. Now, they may not all have wanted to hear what we had to say, but then none of those players could ever say that the coach didn't tell me. If I'm on a 35-man roster and I'm the 33rd guy, I want to know that. So it comes to communication both ways, if that makes sense, Ophir. Yeah, it does to me. And I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's, well, it's the basis to everything that we have, actually. Um, uh, it's a, it's a, it should be a basis to everything in life. But I, yeah. I'm just a little disappointed that I'm, I'm sitting – looking at Dan wrote them like I'm looking in a mirror and, and, and he's just looking and, and 
hasn't asked a question or, or smiled or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, maybe you answered them all. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, if anybody else has anything, my pleasure or Ophir, I mean, you know, you can hand out my, uh, my email, my phone, whatever. And, 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 you know, boys, if you want, keep the videos coming. And uh, if I can help uh, or break down uh, anything, you know, it's, it's, it's my pleasure to help. I know I'm in New York, but believe me, my heart is in Israel. Yeah. I mean, thanks a lot, coach. Um, I will say this to you guys. So again, we, we thank you holds for this and, and hopefully we can do this again in the future. Hopefully we don't have to, we won't have to do this for too long. Uh, but as long as we do, like we said, we'll make the best out of it. Um, for the rest of you guys, so this basically opens up our, well, it just opens up our talk. I don't, I don't have a time period, so I don't know for how long, but at least for the next two weeks, we have a schedule of all kinds of meetings with Holtz and different members of our, uh, of our Olympic national teams and, and people that we can come and get involved. For you coaches, tomorrow we're starting, we're having a coaches session with uh, Simon Rosenbaum. He also plays for our Olympic team. He works for the Tampa Bay Rays for their development. Um, so it's a great opportunity. Please try and join as many as, as much as you can. Uh, we have a link in the chat for you guys to follow us on Facebook and to follow these events for you kids and coaches. Uh, if you haven't joined our virtual tournament yet, our challenges, please do so. Come represent your city. It's a way to stay in touch, to stay active. It's open for everyone. You can invite your friends. You can invite anyone enough to know baseball for it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can either ask me or go on our uh, social media or ask your coaches. You don't have to have social media to do this. It can be done via WhatsApp. It can be done in different ways. So please join us. I know it's hard, but this is a good start for it. Let's keep in mind what coach told us. Let's stay in shape physically, mentally. Uh, if you don't know what you can do, contact your coaches, contact me. Um, we'll help you out. All right. Uh, so that's about it for us today. Thank you guys for joining. Thanks, Holtz, for sharing with us. I mean, um, and that's it. Hope to see you guys uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, guys, stay safe, and uh, hopefully I'll get to see you guys all soon. All right. Thanks all. All right. Bye-bye. We'll